Hi, this is Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today our episode is called Garage Wiring Code Minimum. We're in a detached garage. A detached garage is not required by code to have power. Period. That's code minimum. Done. But code minimum, if the garage is powered, is this. A minimum of one GFCI protected 120 volt receptacle and interior and exterior lighting with lighting controls. Lighting controls are permitted to be by automatic means and they must be at the point of ingress to the garage. So lighting controls could be a wall switch, could be a photo cell for dusk to dawn operation, could be photo cell with motion detection such that the exterior lighting is only on at night with motion. There are a variety of options, but code minimum only requires one 120 volt outlet with GFCI protection. The switching and lighting is not required to have GFCI protection. One interior light and one exterior light. In thinking through your customer's garage lighting needs, it's important to understand um, the customer's ultimate objectives, right? Um, one possibility is that the customer would like to operate the exterior garage lighting for safety purposes from the home. It is a re code requirement that at least some garage lighting located at the egress be um, controllable from the garage point of ingress. And so you can operate the garage exterior lighting with a three-way switch, meaning control is both in the garage and at the house. And that would be a three-way switch configuration. Some considerations for garage wiring could be uh, the minimum power to garage is a 120 volt 20 amp circuit. If a garage is connected then it must be wired to code minimum. Some thought processes that a customer would generally want at a garage would be one outlet on each wall of the garage at standard countertop height that's 44 inches above the floor and one outlet for the garage door receptacle and typically that outlet is placed at the height of the garage door across the ceiling plus three feet so if you have an eight foot garage door measure 11 feet from the garage door to the receptacle unless it's a direct drive garage door and then the garage door outlet needs to be located on the left or the right and should be coordinated in its placement with the contractor or the garage door um, installation personnel. Another thing to consider is, particularly if the garage is going to be drywalled, is that every garage door is required to have sensors by code. So a low voltage 18-2, that's 18 gauge two conduct conductor wiring, wired from the garage door receptacle where the garage door operator will be located to the left sensor and the right sensor for safety. And that can be incorporated into your scope of work as well. Also, most people want more than one light inside the garage. That's code minimum. It doesn't mean that's convenient. And my recommendation for a standard 22 by 22 foot garage is to have at least four four foot linear LED fixtures. There's absolutely no reason at this point to go incandescent or fluorescent. You're costing yourself more in the long run and your light output will be higher and they will be less temperature sensitive, uh, the LEDs will, than the fluorescence in particular. Um, also, you're obviously reducing maintenance. So a minimum of four interior fixtures, a carriage light by the ingress door, security lights, possibly at all four corners or at least the two peaks of the garage, depending on what your roof structure is, um, so that you're illuminating the surrounding area. Most thefts and break-ins happen to garages and lights and dogs are the top two means to deter theft. So by all means, if you're the electrician, satisfy the customer long term, recommend lights and um, proper operation for those lights. Again, by means of motion, photo cell or manual control. And the manual control could be located at the house so that the homeowner has control without having to exit the home um, or at the house and the garage. Okay, so let's say if you're, you're, your garage is going to be a shop or your customer shop or, or your personal shop, right? Additional power is going to be required because one 20 amp circuit 
which is typical for an attached or detached garage, is not going to serve as heavy equipment. If you attempt to run a compressor and a table saw at the same time, you're going to trip the circuit. If you're attempting to run a, a welder, you're going to need additional power. A lathe, you're just going to run out. And so, a typical service to a garage will be 8 gauge wire on a 50 amp breaker so that multiple heavy pieces of equipment can be operated simultaneously. But the real trick is planning that out. You could run a single pole 20 amp breaker, 120 volt 20 amp service to the garage, two pole 30 amp, two pole 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. How much power do you need at the garage? You need to plan out, gather the equipment list, understand the power needs, and size the service accordingly to meet those demands. It's best practice in my opinion, but it's not a code requirement, to locate a service panel in the garage so that if a breaker trips in this locality, you have control and you've isolated the issue from the house. And that's particularly in the context of installing a shop, something with more power and multiple circuits. Overall, in the installation, you'll probably save both time and money as opposed to running multiple home runs back to the house. More control, more power, save time, save money, locating your panel in the garage.